And now we have a legal practitioner, Bolanle Ulubani, joining us uh, to take a look at this. Thank you very much for being a part of our program. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so what is your reaction to the court ruling returning um, uh, the properties to Bukola Saraki? Well, for the defendant, Mr. Bukola Saraki, it must be good news. For the prosecution, it must be something of a sad commentary because of their inept uh, approach to the prosecution and uh, outright incompetence. The truth about it is that in a criminal prosecution, the burden of proof lies with the prosecution. They must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a crime has been committed. And he who has that must also prove. And it's just elementary that if the title document to these properties bear a date before his tenure as governor of Kwara State, it is very, very improbable that he obtained money from illegal activities while he, as governor of Kwara State to purchase those properties. His father was a Senate majority leader during the presidential Shagari era in the Second Republic. His father was also the founder of Societe General Bank, which has now morphed to Intercontinental and now Access Bank. So they were both medical doctors and they were bankers. They invested in the banking industry. So it is probable that they had their own source of wealth, which was not illegitimate. Would you, would you, you, would you say that this is uh, maybe another case you know, of a lack of diligent investigation before trial and prosecution? Because it's not the first time that we're hearing um, stories like this, you know, where properties are returned back to their owners after an EFCC investigation and, and seizure. It is a case, in my own view, and I'm not a Quara indigene. I'm not anybody who is involved in partisan politics, but I'm just a comment, a, making a commentary as a Nigerian as, and as a legal practitioner. It all smacks or smells of political persecution. There is what you call malicious persecution, and there is what you call prosecution. If you are seeking to please your paymasters as an agency, parasitical, or ministry of the executive, you should not do it to an absurd level. Because somebody is not in the good books of the powers that be, you begin to look for all manner of allegations and all manner of charges to bring against the person to please your paymasters. That is what the EFCC has clearly done by virtue of the judgment given. Okay, and, and if we're also going to review EFCC activities again, beyond individuals, how do you think the graft agencies can um, succeed in, in getting um, um, properties forfeited, especially against fighting some powerful individuals who can acquire senior lawyers? How, how do you feel that the EFCC can do better and achieve um, um, some of these forfeitures successfully? They should, first of all, behave like professional investigators because investigations are the foundation to successful prosecution. Secondly, they must invest in technology, forensic technology, both digital and indeed scientific. Once they invest in that, by ensuring, for instance, that they have the right computers, the right personnel trained to forensically analyze digitally and indeed scientifically documents, evidence, and they know that their personnel are well trained to be able to analyze and create a complete and very effective dossier on a potential defendant by surveillance, by tapping, by analyzing statements of account and ensuring that they have an airtight case, first of all, before charging the person to court, they are likely to succeed. But when they first charge a defendant to court and then start looking for evidence, definitely that prosecution will fail. Okay, and lastly, as a lawyer, what do you think, um, what a stronger role do you think the judiciary can play in the fight against corruption um, as we have seen it today? 
Well, one of the first things the judiciary must do is to give damning and exemplary judgment and awards of damages against prosecution agencies that do not do their job effectively. Secondly, the judiciary itself must not be allowed to be used for malicious persecution of otherwise innocent Nigerian citizens. So they must be fair, they must be impartial, and they must do their jobs dispassionately and effectively in all cases brought before them.